Let me do that again. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to people around the world. This is Martin Hubel, your host of the DB2 Night Show. And today is all about iDoug, and I've got two very special guests with me today, Dustin Ratliff and Javier Benavides. Hopefully I didn't massacre that too much. Sorry, uh, Javier. Um, <laughs> it's okay. How are you guys doing today? You're doing okay. Doing well. How are you, Martin? Oh, we're doing fine up here. We're getting some sunshine today. It's been a cloudy, cold week here. It's been... Uh, about 35 degrees or three degrees for other people. And uh, it's not been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to getting out of my garden. My my grass needs cutting. So I'll be self-isolating in my backyard with my lawnmower. That'll be just so much fun. It'll be, actually be good to be outside doing something. So that right. said, let's move the show along and get, get on so we can get on to doing other things with our lives when the show is over. But we appreciate y'all being here and listening to us later on replays. This is our uh, social media page. We've got a Twitter account, we, and we send out uh, notifications on uh, DB2-related things and things related to the show, our LinkedIn group, and we have replays available on YouTube. So having said that, we also have our disclaimers. Things are being recorded. People have trademarks, and uh, everything's owned by DBI because that's how we roll here at the DB2 Night Show. Here's our uh, standard agenda, some announcements, audience polls, the show, and then we wrap up. And I just want to make you aware of the next shows coming up. With the amount of social distancing we're doing, we have uh, some big name speakers wanting to be on the show. We've got Peter Mirosajewski, the director of DB2 Development, for IBM Data and AI in the IBM Canada Lab. So that's our next LUW show, and it's gonna be fantastic to have him on. It'll be the first time we've had a lab director on the show, and we're looking forward to that in a big way. Uh, to close out the LUW side, I'll be doing a presentation called the, DB, the Data Pioneer. Uh, this will be given at various IDUG events as they happen this year. And we, then we've got the uh, ZOS edition. We've got Mariella Wyrock, uh, an IBM DE, who's been with us many times before, talking about uh, high-performing Java applications for DB2. And we finish off the year with Dave Belke speaking on uh, uh, DB2 best practices for security. That'll be a great show as well. As always, if you uh, want to learn more about uh, making DB2 LUW faster. Uh, there's a, a demo available on the DBI uh, software website. There's a link to it. You can follow that and watch it. And if you watch the entire thing, you get a gift card from DBI. Our winner last month, or last, sorry, uh, two weeks ago was Robert Leadham of uh, FedEx. He won a gift certificate for being uh, in our studio audience, and that's just great. And with that, we thank our sponsors, DBI, and yours truly, Martin Hubel Consulting. And uh, another little commercial for uh, DBI. This is just showing one of their new trend analysis screens. Uh, we spoke about this the last time on the show. This is showing where peaks of activity are, how they look, and you click on any of the nodes, you'll get more information, and you can also see if there's been any system changes and how those may have affected performance. All really great stuff for DB2 LUW DBAs. Okay, now we're into the polling section of the uh, of the uh, show, and the uh, first poll is as always. Oops, I forgot to update this. It, I don't have DB2 11.5 on there, but this will give us an idea of how people are using DB2 in our community. Many of that. DB2 11.5 seems to elude me from time to time. I went in and updated all the polling questions today, and I thought I had updated them all, except this one. We're seeing what people are doing there. Enough of our audience has voted, so I'll close that and share the results. 100% of our audience is on DB2 11.1. There's some DB2 10.5 hanging around. Of course, 
DB2 10.5 is going out of service at the end of the month, so at, at your convenience, you'll likely want to get on and get off that. Get on and get off. I like that. How about on uh, uh, DB2Z? We've got D12, 10, 11, 10, and uh, seeing as this is a Z show, I would assume everybody would be running uh, uh, running DB2 on Z. We'll see. And again, we've got the same uh, percentage of people voting, so we'll share that. We've got people up to date on D12, and we've got some D11 hanging around. What operating systems do you use in production? I think this, yes, it, uh, this has all of the uh, standard flavors that people would run. And uh, interesting to see. And of course, we've got a relatively small studio audience. But uh, what we're seeing here is that uh, mainly Linux people today, uh, nobody on AIX, I think that would change if the sample set was a little larger, but that's okay. We'll move along and do the next one. Asking about DB2 in the cloud. Seeing if anybody is uh, doing that. And as it sits right now, we don't have any cloud users. <coughs> I'll hide that. And we've got a couple more uh, just to ask people about the DB2 Night Show. And uh, on YouTube, which is relatively new for us, we've been doing, I've been doing it all season this year, and it's nice to see. And uh, it's just another way of viewing the show without having to download things to your PC. And uh, just having a look at this, we're seeing that some people are starting to subscribe and others are looking at it. And that's fine, too. It's amazing the amount of content that I, I staggers uh, me to think about the amount of content that's just going up on uh, YouTube every single day from all sources around the world. All right. What do you love about IDUD conferences? You get to vote for everything you like here. And I don't get a vote, but I love the food personally. The food, oh yes. Uh, there was a time, believe it or not, back a long time ago, it wasn't an IDUG conference, but it was a DB2 conference, and all they had for food in the evenings was chips and dip. Oh. I like French onion dip as much as the next person, but uh, I've made it a habit through the years of eating a little more than chips and dip for dinner. Yep, absolutely. So. At the time, I, it seemed rather uh, cheesy. Well, it wasn't cheesy. It was oniony, actually. But uh, there you go. Exactly. And, uh, I, this is another question I just added today, uh, asking you to go to the IBM website for content. And, uh, I actually found my IBM Premier or my IDUG Premier membership card from 2007. That's pretty impressive. And there we've got some votes on that. We'll close that off and share that. One person saying they're a Premier member, and the other people look at the free content. So that's uh, gain a small sample size, but uh, shows you what people and get to and whether or not people have signed up to be a premier member or not. And I believe that's our last question for now. So I'm going to close that off. And uh, what we'll do now is see if we can uh, um, turn control over to you folks. Dustin, are you going to be flipping the slides? Yeah, absolutely. I can do it. All right. Well, let me try something here. I've put a link up here for, yeah. for YouTube. 
to be able to play your content. And uh, I'm hoping that that, when I click this, it goes on my other monitor. Let me just move this over here. Yeah. Now, before it goes any further, I'm gonna rewind it back to the beginning. Can you see that all right? We can. All right, let me do this. And let me go back here and see now how it works. Alrighty. Awesome. That, that worked out as good as we could ho have hoped. Exactly. Exactly. Hot diggity dog. All right. Now, keeping that in mind, I'm going to uh, go up here and uh, I'm going to find you, uh, Dustin. I'm going to make you a presenter. You'll have a little thing on there. It should be in front of you now. If you click yes, that will make you the presenter. And I see your screen. All right. I assume you can see that. Yes, everything looks wonderful, nice and clear. Your names are spelled correctly on the bottom, or as I know how to spell them. So Sounds great. We have a question and answer tool. People can write in questions, and I can uh, um, and uh, I will ask questions as uh, uh, or read the questions to you so you can answer them as we go along. But otherwise, I'll leave myself muted in case my dog goes off or the doorbell or something like that. No, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks, Martin. So welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the All About iDug presentation for the DB2 Night Show. I do. I got sucked into the new realm, so my B in DB2 is lowercase there, so I apologize for that. Um, so today uh, we're going to be talking all about iDug, and, and we're going to start off with the introduction. So I am Dustin Ratliff. I am the North American Conference Planning Committee Conference Chair for the 2020 conference. Um, we'll talk. We'll get a little bit more in depth about my experience and, and things like that with iDug here in a bit. But I've been a CPC member since going back to 2016 in the Austin conference and have held just about every role within the CPC, um, you know, presentations, team lead, uh, chair elect, and I'm now chair of the 2020 conference. Javier, I'll turn it over to you for your introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Javier Estrada, and I am the chair elect for the content committee. We are going to talk a bit about that later on what we do. I am what you can say relatively new in IDOC. Well, I have been volunteering since, I don't know, three or four years. Uh, but I have been quite active in the forums for the last uh, eight years or so. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Javier. We'll get back to you here shortly. So this is our agenda for today. Um, it's a fairly sizable agenda, but uh, we will get through it. So I, Doug, as with any good presentation, you start off with uh, uh, some upfront slides about the mission statement. Um, things to point out here, we are an in international DB2 user group. Independent is the keyword there, not for profit and user run. 
Uh, we like to support and strengthen the information services community by providing the highest quality education and services. So that is what that's what we're all about here at IDUG, and that's that's what we try to do, what we try to accomplish. So there's the video. Uh, I linked it here in the uh, in the slides that Martin just showed. So I appreciate that. So I wanted to get started and talk about the current state of IDUG North America 2020. Uh, folks on the call have probably heard, and if you haven't, IDUG NA has been canceled for June. It was originally slated to go June 7th through the 11th in Dallas, Texas. It has been canceled at this point. However, the situation is being evaluated going forward for 2020. Um, we're going to provide some more details here. Probably uh, this this says the next month. I'm guessing in the next couple of weeks. We are working on a couple of different options. Uh, one of those options could delve us into the digital realm or the virtual realm. So definitely stay tuned and, and more to come on that. Uh, if you have specific questions, if you signed up originally for Dallas or something like that and you, you have specific questions, there's an email. You Feel free definitely to reach out to me. My, my email is on this presentation as well as on idug.org. You can also email idug at idug.org uh, if you have more specific questions. But unfortunately, as I said, the 2020 on-site conference for Dallas has been canceled at this point. So on IDUG online forums, uh, staying connected in, in today's connected world. We are on Facebook there as our, our address. We are on Twitter as well as YouTube. Martin talked a little bit about that. It is amazing how much content and things like that are on YouTube. Everything from the Z to LUW to how to make clay pottery, anything you want is, is out on YouTube these days, including iDug. You have the iDug check channel, and we'll delve into that a little bit more in a bit, but there's a lot of good content out there. It uses the ON24 platform, uh, and there's a, a lot of good presentations and content from a lot from, you know, past and, more, and recent IDUG conferences. And we are on LinkedIn as well. There is a link. Uh, the main online forum I wanted to highlight today is our mobile app. Uh, there's a link there to download the mobile app, and it supports all the you know, Google Play, Apple App Store, and Web Planner. Um, you can get it on Android, all the various platforms and devices. Um, you know, right now, I would say the, the iDug mobile app is uh, somewhat admittedly not that useful outside of actual conferences. However, we are uh, taking steps, and that's slated to change. Um, again, mobile app mainly used during events, uh, but but we're really looking at changing that, right? Just like well, you'll kind of notice the theme of the presentation today, if you had one takeaway, is IDUG is more than just conferences and events, right? That is a big majority of what we do, uh, and I'm going to talk more about some of those upcoming conferences, events, and obviously that's, you know, stay tuned for information there with the current situation. Uh, but the big theme of today is we want to get across is IDUG is, has a lot more to offer than just the conferences and events, right? And just like in the theme of that, the mobile app is, is something that we're targeting to offer more than just conferences and events. Uh, we would love it to be a 24 by 7 by 365 uh, store where you can go and get content and articles and presentations and white papers and all that wonderful stuff that IDUG.org already has. Um, that being said, also, if you're at a conference, the mobile app is absolutely invaluable, and hopefully people here who have attended the conference have used it, and it has everything, right? And I remember when you used to just get the little pocket program, it was the big piece of paper that you fold out, and, and while we stu still do give that out, uh, the mobile app itself has all of the stuff that's in there, but, you know, a whole lot more. I mean, you can link out, you can submit moderator, uh, you can sign up to be a moderator, uh, you can submit mini panel questions, things like that. Um, so it has tons of invaluable resources. Other things uh, for the actual conference itself uh, it has schedules and handout material, uh, speakers, their bios, exhibitors, uh, venue maps, which can be really helpful. It's, I'm really sad that the Dallas conference got canceled. The venue was so awesome. 
for Dallas. And I'm hoping eventually we can get back there in North America. But uh, the venue map was going to be quite helpful because it was a huge hotel, probably the biggest hotel that I had seen at an IDUG. Um, moderator sign up and other helpful local links there uh, within the mobile app. All right, so I'm going to talk about IDUG events in 2020 and beyond with the super big asterisk that this is all subject to change. And obviously, we are living in a subject to change world at this point right now, unfortunately. So everything I'm about to say could completely change, right? Um, so the IDUG DB2 Tech Conference uh, right now for Australia is slated for September 14th and 15th in Canberra, and then uh, September 16th through the 18th in Sydney. Um, those events, as of right now, are still scheduled to take place. Uh, again, subject to change and subject to, you know, whether that's changing, rescheduling, going digital, all those things are, are on the table for these events. Uh, the IDUG EMEA DB2 Tech Conference is, is still scheduled and, and set for October 25th through the 29th in Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, I've heard the venue for that is fantastic. So, you know, Certainly, you know, hopefully we get past all of this stuff and, and, you know, we can see everybody in Edinburgh. Uh, just to interrupt there a bit, uh, Dustin. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for this, but uh, <laughs> going to Australia right now is problematic, and it's a question of whether or not they, they have a countrywide quarantine. If you go to Australia, right. they'll put you in a hotel of their choice for two weeks prior to you being allowed to do anything. So nice. there really has to be a major shift in, in how people are responding to this uh, worldwide uh, problem. And uh, that yep. could also happen as well with the uh, EU in terms of how people respond to being able to go to Scotland. Uh, yep. So I, I'm, I'm excited. I know the venue where we're going in, in Edinburgh. I've actually stayed in one of the uh, hotels, a conference hotel, and I was doing work for a client over there. So I'm nice. I'm really hoping that Edinburgh happens. But, uh, me too. Me too. Yeah. Um, yeah, and absolutely. And your your point is well taken and a great point, Martin. Right. So um, definitely, that's where the subject to change comes in because uh, believe me, there's tons and tons of conversation going on at all uh, all levels within the the IDUG volunteer organizations of what we're going to do for the rest of the year and how to map that out for all of these events. So, um, unfortunately, I don't have further details on any of that, but um, as of this point in time, those events are scheduled. And just like you said, I really hope that it, you know, um, in particularly the Edinburgh, um, you know, as it is on as scheduled, and I hope that it continues to go. Um, but everything is subject to change, and that's kind of how we have to state it, right? Considering all of the work that volunteers put in this far, and uh, I'm in the same boat with my hobby, which is playing music. Uh, all the venues are closed. All the rehearsals are canceled. And, uh, right. I'm getting exactly. to really get familiar with my ceiling in the family room, which is about to get a new coat of paint this weekend. Well, <laughs> you know, that'll be nice. At least if you're looking at it all the time, have That's a new right. coat of paint to look at, right? That's it. Oh, well, I'll leave you alone. I'm going to mute myself No. Again. All good. All good. So uh, these two these two events we kind of talked about uh, the event in India has been postponed, uh, new potential dates to be announced, and we already talked about the North America has been postponed slash canceled. Um, we are going to do something hopefully with North America this year. Uh, not exactly 100% sure on what yet. So uh, new dates and and keep an eye out here in the next couple of weeks for announcements on that. Uh, so here's a total event listing when we do get back to a normal state. Um, IDUG is around the globe. So we have, we talked a little bit about IDUG India, which kind of leads off the year for us in, in typical fashion. IDUG North America follows up. Uh, we didn't touch on Mexico City and Brazil, which I know is an event that, that Javier is super excited about and has played a part in, in doing that. So, of course. Um, exactly, yeah. So. You know, that's more details to come on that. And again, unfortunately, you know, subject to change. But, uh, you know, in a normal world, we would we would hold that event. Um, IDOG Australia and EMEA, we've kind of covered. And then the IDOG Data Tech Summit 
which this year is is still slated for to happen this year, I do believe. Uh, actually going to split it, and I believe there's one uh, scheduled for Silicon Valley Lab, and then there is one scheduled to be up in Toronto, uh, in your neck of the whip there, Martin. So, uh, you know, again, look for more information on these events. Uh, IDUG will be pushing out information as it comes out. And on idug.org, there is this handy little calendar of events. And unfortunately, you can see that uh, SQL Adria there has been postponed. However, I wanted to showcase the calendar of events because it is not just IDUG events. There are also RUG and other user group events and meetings on the IDUG calendar event. So we obviously have a big interest in partner with many of our, our, our RUGs. So it's a really nice global kind of view on what's coming up and what's going on. And we certainly will not read this, and we don't need to, but this is where the subject to change comes in, right? Obviously, this is, this is IDUG's official statement on the coronavirus and COVID-19, and it pretty much just says we are monitoring the situation as closely as possible, keeping the safety of everyone involved in mind, and we will provide information as it becomes available. All right, let's talk about premium memberships. It came up earlier a little bit, uh, but you know, let's talk about premium memberships. So premium memberships is actually an add-on uh, to a, a regular IDUG membership. A regular IDUG membership comes about when you go to IDUG.org and you sign up for a new membership. Uh, but the premium membership also you can purchase for uh, the current special rate is 99 bucks a year, and it gives you access to a ton of stuff, right? Um, so highlights, you get access to technical session recording from IDUG events to be released on a regular schedule. Now keep in mind, we do release these events, and I have a, a nicer chart here in a few slides. We do release this uh, content to a normal user, but we don't release it for sometime several months after a conference. So if you're a premium member, you're going to get access to all this exclusive content without having attended the conference much sooner after the conference is over. Uh, also, you can get up to $300 in discounts toward conference registration fees. Uh, so, for example, if you're thinking about attending a future IDUG event or conference, uh, you get you purchase the $99 premium membership, you pr instantly get your money back. Uh, you get 100 bucks off that event. So, actually, you get your money back plus a dollar. How's that? So, what are all the membership options? Uh, there's actually three uh, little known third one there. So the standard membership, as I kind of explained, is uh, you get that when you go out to idug.org and you say create an account, and that gives you access to a ton of good content and articles, which Javier will highlight a lot of that here in a bit uh, from his perspective. Um, the idug premium membership, will will delve a little bit deeper into what that entail, entails here in the next few slides. And then the student membership. Uh, which pretty much syncs up with premium membership. You just have to show valid student, uh, you know, student identification. So I Doug wanted to make a push to, you know, get a lot more students involved uh, with DB2 and with the the I Doug community. So those benefits are pretty much on par with what a premium membership would be. And here's my chart that I referred to earlier. So you can kind of see the benefits, and it's, it breaks down between standard, premium, and student members. Uh, again, you can kind of see the student and the premium membership are almost identical, say almost. Uh, the, pretty much the students don't get the, the 100 bucks off of future IDUG conferences. Um, right now that's slated as North America, and me and Australia. We may add to that list in the future. But the other thing I'll point out there is what I said Earlier, the premium memberships get the conference proceedings after nine months. Uh, regular attend or regular members don't get it until 18 months. So, oh, you know, a year and a half later after a conference is has already ended, you can you get that content. So this is the screen if you have purchased or or if you're thinking about purchasing a, a, an IDUG premium membership, this is the screen that you get. Um, provide you, you know, the details on how to access the benefits and, and how to go get everything and kind of some snippets of what's out there. Uh, there's a premium content blog, which we'll discuss a little bit here in a bit. 
Uh, and it kind of gives you some of the more recent and hot articles that are out there right now. You can see stuff as recent as here earlier this month and late last month being written and looked at. So moving on from premium, let's talk about IDUG forums a bit. Uh, the Starting off with the North America forum, it's kind of funny. Uh, I, I've been North America CPC uh, you know, for several years now, kind of been through the ranks, and I did not realize that this forum totally existed. Uh, this is a thing that we're going to start using much more. Um, this is a place for North America. Now, there are, you know, definitely posts out here. As you can see, uh, things as early, you know, as, as recent as earlier this month. But uh, this is kind of a place for attendees at the conference to get together and talk about and talk about IDUG. So, hey, you know, I went to Dustin's presentation and, and I didn't understand this one slide or I didn't really like the shirt that he was wearing or something like that. Um, talk to other conference attendees, presenters, people that are involved with the conference right here on this forum. And like I said, this is a place where I could see us linking out to our mobile app here coming up uh, and, and, and really using these forums because I think they could be handy. Same thing for EMEA, uh, the same type of forum, and the same forum does exist. Again, it's a place for EMEA conference attendees to, to get together and discuss things about the conference, presentations, articles, keynotes, things like that. All right, so those are the forums that I'll talk about. Getting into the DB2 for, uh, the portal. Uh, you can see my little screenshot there. You go to iDuck.org, and there's a handy link right there at the top for folks to access the DB2 portal. Um, you can access it directly from the, you know, that that link that I have there, DB2 slash DB2, what's new, uh, or linking off of iDuck.org. The stuff here runs on the ON24 platform, which uh, folks, you know, have been involved enough with IBM. They probably have seen things hosted on the ON24 platform. That is a major platform which IBM uses to host a lot of their virtual presentations and webinars and things like that. Uh, what the DB2 portal gives you access to are tons of webinars. Uh, I know IBM sends out, you know, via, via various channels a lot of webinars and content, but most of that stuff, this is kind of a nice hub for you to get, you know, all of that stuff. And it also has a lot of things on white papers uh, it has customer stories. I didn't realize that it had customer stories until recently. Uh, there's a, you know, kind of a cool customer. It's an LUW-focused customer store. That, that there is one out there um, and, and several others also, actually, uh, to take a look at. So that's really, you know, part of the value is as DB2 or <clears throat> as IDUG as a user organization, customer stories are one of the most valuable things, right? That's kind of why we all get together. So those, you know, take a look at those that are out there. Well, it also has IBM briefings on, on new products and, and, you know, things that, you know, trends and direction of the industry, things like that. Um, it also has the DB2 family of products and, and links and to product pages and other information for, you know, this gets updated as soon as things are released. So when IBM announces things, boom, again, you can use this as kind of a central hub and go take a look uh, at, at what are the, the latest trends and, and some of the newest products that IBM has out there. So within the DB2 portal, you go there and it's kind of broken down as, as I show there in my screenshot. Uh, the resources page itself has additional blog links, actually has hands-on labs. So hands-on labs, when I know can speak from a conference perspective, uh, hands-on labs are a, a huge attract uh, attraction at the conferences themselves. There's actually hands-on labs posted out on the DB2 portal that you can download and kind of run for yourself. Product tours, you would think of product tours and demos you'd think of, again, in a conference for perspective or light, you would think of as being on an exhibit floor. There's things like that out there. Uh, there's how-to videos. And a lot of that stuff links out to YouTube or, or, or has things that you would think of finding on YouTube. Um, roadmaps and things like that. Um, roadmaps and things like that. So you can find, again, trends and directions and where IBM is going with the DB2 family of products and a whole lot more out there. 
Uh, finally, the, the portal offers links to DB2 trials and downloads. So, <clears throat> you know, you can see they're installing DB2 on your coffee break. Well, they, they, they actually provide within the DB2 portal links to download some of the latest, you know, some of the latest, you know, trial versions, of course, but some of the latest offerings. So you could pop them onto a machine and, you know, give them, take them for a test drive and, you know, see what you think if you're thinking about purchasing or upgrading or something like that. It's a handy way to get a hold of the software trial version, I should say. I'm going to move on here and talk about iDoug blogs. Uh, first one I'll highlight here is the iDoug President's blog. Of course, the current acting president is Billy. Um, he has his blog out there, and it's, it's kind of his place for thoughts and messages. Uh, you know, uh, other iDoug leaders have posted on here before, but it's mainly just the acting iDoug president. And Billy tends to do uh, tends to do a monthly kind of post out there. So, you know, whatever's going on in in going on in the world is you know as it pertains to DB2 and the family of products in our industry. Uh, you know, Billy will post his thoughts and, and messages out there to the iDoug community. So links to other featured blogs, uh, you can go and, and find there are links off of idug.org. Now these are not idug uh, affiliated blogs, but they are uh, community members and friends of idug who have their own blog postings. And there are most of them are still active. And even if they are not active, there's still a ton of great information and material out there on a lot of these blogs. Again, these aren't necessarily idug affiliated blogs, but they are you know, IDUG community members and, and friends of IDUG. And there is a ton of good information on these. So go check them out. You may find one that you want to follow and read. So we're going to talk now about the IDUG tech channel. Uh, I mentioned this up front in my stay connected uh, portion of the, of the presentation. But so the tech channel is a place for you to read and view, subscribe to, and subscribe to uh, DB2 related webinars. Uh, so again, similar, the portal has uh, the portal has some DB2 webinars, but this is more of a place where you can go and you can do a like an RSS subscription and say, hey, uh, subscribe me when the stuff gets posted or or notify me of when things are coming up, right? So again, you can, in the tech channel, you can subscribe for the new content when it's uploaded and search the archives. Uh, and again, this is searching a lot of things using the On24 platform, the on-demand stuff from IBM. A lot of these, uh, like that first one, DB2 for ZOS and IBM Z systems, an unbeatable combination. I think that was a presentation given by an IBMer at, a, at the at least the Charlotte and Rotterdam conferences last year. So very recent content out here. Nice thing is here you can filter by technology, platform, or article subject, right? So I kind of show a screenshot here. Hey, I want to see stuff as it pertains to the cloud pack for data, DB2 for Z, uh, DB2 12 migration planning, which if you're not on 12 yet, uh, you should should or are likely thinking about that here very coming up very soon db2 ai things like that you can also see the subscribe button in my my screenshot there so moving on to talking about the idug website redesign now i admitted this recently and i'll admit it again that idug.org has a ton a ton a ton of great material behind it right um, I also will be the first to tell you that idug.org could use a facelift, right? It's maybe not the most intuitive or easiest thing to navigate all the time, right? And <clears throat> I admit that. So, but uh, very luckily, we, we realize this as, as a volunteer organization, and the idug website is getting a redesign, right? So we have contracted with the third-party company, and we're going to give it more of a an updated communities look and feel. I mean, the IDUG community itself obviously is a community, so we wanted to kind of run with that and give it that communities look and feel. Um, we're also going to have several enhancements there 
to provide better user experience and make the content more logical and easier to find. Because I, I, it's my opinion that a lot of people and the part of this presentation's focus is to, to let people know, hey, listen, iDoug is more than just conferences, right? And I, I know that we have such great content and articles and things like that to provide to the community. And that's part of the thing about we redesigning the web the website is we want to make that more apparent. We want to make that easier to access from our user base. The other thing is the new website will integrate better with our mobile app. So there's opportunities, as I talked about earlier, with the mobile app. Uh, hopefully make that more of a 24 by 7 by 365 type of thing and not just an at conference uh, tool. And so website mi migration is start to is set to start in the coming weeks and could take a month or so to to migrate right so um, you know as with any project um, those are the time frames we're hoping for but you know pardon our dust while it's going on so the other note is event pages so if you go to idug.org forward slash na that page is not set to migrate the EMEA page is not sent to my set to migrate it's just idug.org itself right now all right and with that um, I will turn it over to Javier so Javier okay thank you Dustin all right so I mentioned the content committee a while ago so what does it mean or what do we do uh, the first thing that we can take from Dustin is that the IDOC is a great source for education and it is so much more than just the events themselves. And you may have noticed that when you look into the page, the first thing you will see is a page with articles. And that's uh, what we take care about. We are the team who take care about the articles, but we do so much more than that. We also visit the regional user groups in their meetings and we also go there to promote iDoc and do some more presentations. And we also offer fun SQL workshops. You may have heard about them. They are quite fun. So maybe you will get a chance to participate in one on the next, uh, on the next event. And uh, well, there are many questions on, around this on, on what we do. And the first thing that is that, uh, okay, so I see a lot of articles. And uh, all right, so the content committee is taking care of that. But uh, what do we do? What are we looking for? Or what does it mean? So the thing is that I do this is for everybody. and We all make it. So it doesn't mean that uh, only our whole team is going to write the articles. Oh, no, 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 no. We want everybody to participate on that. That's exactly what we want. We want even more content to share, even more stories to tell, even more things to say. And we want it from the DB2 community. Or we want everybody to participate. You don't have to be the DB2 master to do it. You just need a little bit of intention, and that's all. Everything else is going to go smoothly. So where do you see all this content? If you move to the next slide, please. Thank you. So we have a few articles and a few blogs where you will find them. The main one, the, the one that you will see on the main page is the idle content articles. We also have another section for hot topics. We also have the beginners blog. And there is even a blog in Spanish, which I take care of. And of course, we're going to expand each and every single one of them. And we need a lot of help from that. So we need more volunteers to join and share your stories. Okay, so which kind of stories? If we go to the next slide, please. Okay, so for the main blog, we actually have a monthly topic, and this is the list for all the topics and the upcoming ones. Right now, we are in Zoe. And next one is going to be a very interesting one, it's going to be war stories. For example, what we do in here, or what we want is, we want people to share whenever they had a problem and we want to see or we want to hear what was the problem, uh, if you can tell us more about the impact, what you tried, what you didn't try, what didn't work, and especially what you learned in the process. That's what we want. And uh, if we can actually get it for each and every single topic, 
that would be perfect. And that's a win-win because uh, we get content, everybody gets to learn it, and guess what? That's also a great topic for another future presentation in another future event. So don't miss this chance. And about this, uh, if we move to the next slide, please. So I have been getting a lot of questions every time I, I try to convince people to write. And uh, here are some, some of the most asked questions. Do you need to pay to see these articles? Uh, no, you only need your general IDOC account. And that's it. That's all you need. Another one that is actually quite frustrating when I hear this one. Do I need to be a speaker if I want to write an article? No, definitely not. Everyone can write it. We have a, a place for everyone and we have a topic for everyone. And, and by the way, if I have an article, okay, or I have a topic, but it is not the most topic, can I still write? Of course, we have a lot of blogs. And what can I write about? Well, as I mentioned, war stories is the main thing we are looking for and everything else, every creative use, everything that scratched your head, everything that uh, got you up in the middle of the night, why not? This is the place to share it. And there are many more places to share it. One of these examples is the regional user groups. So if we move to the next slide, thank you. So here we have the map. We know that uh, there are many, many regional user groups and they are mainly located in the areas in which we have presence. We have, see, we have in here the general places that we, everybody knows, in North America, Europe, India, Australia. Now, what if I told you that there is a, an individual user group for each and every single of those highlighted zones? And of course, I am Mexican, so I am also very interested in the green part, which is Mexico and Brazil. I actually heard something that is kind of like a dream. So the first, uh, in the first time that I heard about uh, IDOC coming to Brazil, I had a comment or a wish from this person saying, I would like to see a unified front from all Latin America. Uh, that's still my wish and that's still my dream. So little by little, we are expanding it. And uh, this is uh, also uh, thanks to the support from regional user groups. So that's also why we are very interested in knowing when you're going to have your event, if it is going to be virtual. Well, we know the situation nowadays, but uh, if it is virtual, if it is uh, in person, um, anyway, we want to know. And we want to take part, we want to participate. You are definitely not alone. We are just one team. Okay. So what's in it for user groups? Uh, Dustin mentioned the, the website uh, redesign. So what can you expect from this if you belong to a user group or if you're a leader? You will have the chance to have hosting for your page within the ad portal. There will be no need to worry about uh, hosting, worry about uh, website design, worry about this uh, extra time and effort that uh, you really don't have to, to work with, guess what? IDOC is going to give you the chance for that. We're going to have it, uh, again, as a unified front. That's, that's the main message of what we want. And we want the same thing for the calendar so that everybody can see what's going to happen and where. Okay, so another way to get in touch or in which you can get more updates is the monthly bulletin. If we move to the next slide, please. So the monthly bulletin is an email that you get every single month. You have a lot of content there. You have the highlight of the first article of the month, the personal letter, news about events, webcasts, and uh, maybe you have uh, noticed this little TV icon on the upper side. Well, it, it leads you to the webcast portal. You may not have noticed, it actually took a, a long time for me to notice it. Uh, but yeah, so the main message is that uh, it is also a, a great place to start and start exploring. Just go, play with it, and get as much as you can. 
it's for you. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Other you can also find the previous archive entries anytime you want. So it's a great summary and it's a great place to start and get more involved. And that's exactly what I want to talk about. So if we move to the next slide, please. There are many teams. So we have the web team, we have a CPC team for each and every single region in, in which I do has presence. And of course, there is also the content committee. Martin can also tell you about that because he is also a member, by the way. And then the main message in here is, uh, is that IDOC is what you make of it. Uh, please remember that at all times because uh, you can make it, it depends on you. It's about you sharing what you want to share. And it is about you and each and every single one of us promoting it. So what does it mean or what does it mean for, for us now that we are here? So uh, next slide, please. So as I mentioned, this is all about sharing. Share your interests, share your stories, and this awareness of something you want to talk about or something that you want to learn, but you want somebody else to share it, then why not? This is a place for that. You can meet industry leaders and you can find material that will be very useful for you to apply with an abstract. Why not? So, as I, well, I, I belong to the content committee, I am listing each and every single reason for which I personally belong to this, uh, to this team. But this is also hold, holding true for all of the teams. And even if you don't belong to a team, well, I look for sharing. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So this is a bit of my story, and you can quote me on this. Uh, joining IDOC has been the best investment I have ever made in my career. I'm, I'm actually relatively new. Well, I have been working with DB2 for 13 years. My first DB2 was version 5. And uh, when I was uh, a bit more serious into my education and my career, IDOC was the first place I went to. I went into the forums, I wanted to see if what I knew was accurate, I want to help, I wanted to validate what I knew. And over time, I shared the content committee. And it has been my favorite place so far. Because thanks to that, I get a chance to stay, to stay, stay current and get more involved with uh, literally everybody. Also thanks to that, I am an IBM champion. And for all I know, I am the only Mexican IBM champion. And also thanks to that, well, I am now discovering my new passion for presenting and going to conferences and sharing. They say it's all about sharing. And how about you, Austin? What would you say about your experience? Absolutely. Thanks, Javier. Yeah. So I, I completely agree. Um, you know, volunteering with IDUG has helped my career immensely. Um, you know, I, doing it has has really driven my career and, and, and propelled me up. Right. And, you know, before, if I have an issue or something like that, obviously you open a case or a ticket with IBM and you talk to, to level two and things like that. But now if I have an issue, let it be big enough in the right time of the day. I have John Campbell on WhatsApp because I know the guy personally through my networking connections that I done. Right. So, um, you know, having those tools and resources and getting those experiences uh, whether it's watching a presentation or, as Javier mentioned, giving a presentation myself it has really has really you know rounded me as a technician and and propelled me. Um, a little bit about my background: I, I, I came to IDUG again back in 2012 uh, after attending another set of conferences and was totally impressed immediately with how the uh, the conference was ran and put on. Uh, that was just as an attendee, right? Um, one of my coworkers, you know, conned me into, I should say, not con, maybe, talked to me into <laughs> volunteering, and, and it was a fantastic idea uh, on his part and mine, right, to, to get involved. And I joined the CPC in 2016, and since then have kind of held pretty much uh, soup to nuts every role possible up until, you know, this year, uh, you know, now I'm the chair of the NACPC. 
Uh, and as Javier said, I'm now an IBM champion, thanks to, to my affiliation and my volunteering efforts with IDUG. And that opens a whole new world of, of you know, community and, and getting involved and connected with various others. And, and really, again, the, the, the highlight of IDUG and staying with the, the user group mentality is that I just get to know so many other users, right? And, and I, now I have a network of my own social circle, as John Campbell would say, of, of, of people. And I know people who are running very similar products and tooling that, that, that my company is. And hey, when I'm having issues, it's not just open a case with IBM, it's reach out to my IDUG friends and my IDUG community. Hey, have you seen this? Hey, have you had this problem? Hey, I'm thinking about implementing this feature. What's, you know, what's, what's going on there? So um, it, the, the uh, getting involved with IDUG, as Javier pointed out, was, was one of the best things that I've done. And it's just, just helped me out immensely. I've also presented, um, as Javier kind of said, uh, at IDUG conferences, um, obviously within the CPC and, and actually with my local rug as well, I've done presentations. So. All right, so um, kind of wrapping up here a little bit. Uh, if you're wondering how do I contact IDUG, uh, there is a contact us page there. So I snapped it out for the slide deck. Uh, we have a mailing address, a phone and a fax, but in the technology world, email works very good as well, idug at idug.org. And there's the laundry list of what we did cover today, and I think we're coming in right about on time, which is great. It certainly is. It's just amazing. Yep. I've had kind of a long association with idug myself. But uh, I started a little earlier than you guys. I started presenting at IDUG in 1989. Very nice. And uh, I think I, I missed a few years while I was on, uh, around the time I was on the board of directors in terms of presenting. But I'm, the account North America and Europe, I've done over 50 presentations for IDUG. And I was the editor of the printed magazine. We had a, a magazine for uh, the first 15 years called the IDUG Solutions Journal that has evolved into the content committee because there's always a need for content outside of conferences. And uh, now I uh, serve in a small capacity on the content committee. I've avoided uh, taking on leadership roles because I've reached a point in my life where other people that are willing to do it, I'm happy to have them do it along with my activities on the uh, my local user group, which we run a two-day meeting per year, which is kind of about one third the size of running an IDUG, and uh, which makes it uh, challenging. And along with the DB2 Night Show and other things, I, I'm doing enough for the industry. I don't need to uh, lead everything that I'm, I'm involved with. But uh, as you've said, you get more out of IDUG by participating in it, uh, coming to the conferences, getting involved with committees. Uh, You'll learn web skills. If you get on the web committee, you'll learn uh, an awful lot about DB2 if you uh, get on the content committee. And the one thing about DB2 after working with it only since 1985 um, is there's always more to learn. It's uh, arguably the product in the IBM portfolio that has changed more every single year of its existence than any other product that IBM has ever pr uh, put out. So it's important to have the avenues to keep up with the product. Yep. So with that, uh, I I would like to thank Javier uh, today and thank you, Martin, for having us. It's, yeah, it's always a pleasure. I'll, I'll take over now. I'll uh, show my screen and just do a bit of a wrap up here. We have our final polling question we like to ask people on, on in terms of what they've learned about the uh, uh if they learned anything today, I'll bring that up just now. And uh, here's our last question. I'll launch it. And it says, did you learn anything today? Let's give people a chance to, to uh, say something. And uh, they are. And with that, uh, we are just letting people vote. Another, another few seconds, I'll close that off. And oops. Close that poll and uh, share the results. And look at that, everybody learned something today. So you did a good job. And uh, that's what we like to see on the DB2 Night Show.
So it looks like you, your work here is complete. Our weekend is about to start. Of course, it's hard in this time of, uh, of uh, distancing that we're going through to know when a Friday finishes and a Saturday starts, but uh, we'll do our best. The weather is improving here. So hopefully we'll be outside on the weekend and, and doing yard work and other such fun things as we stay on our property. But it's uh, glad you were able to join us today. And it's always good to do this show. It's an annual event for the DB2 Night Show to have the IDUG uh, conference folks and other uh, leadership uh, members of the leadership team on, on the DB2 Night Show. So with that, I'm going to cue the music. Thank you once, oh, thank you again once more. And, uh, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks for the DB2 LUW show with uh, Peter uh, talking about the directions of DB2 LUW. Thank you again, and bye-bye all. Thanks, Martin. Thank you.